Pete's Tools.com. G'day guys, Pete here again to annoy you. Hey, I don't know if you fellas are anything like me and as clumsy as hell and you're always snapping your bloody earth leads or you're running over them or you're tangling them up and, and they get holes in them or they get garks in them like this and you can't really do much about it. Wrap some tape around it, that's about all you can do. Um, I've got a quick tip for you guys how to join these leads together and either make a bigger long extension one or if you just want to get some old leads and make them that you can use them again. I'll show you a quick tip how to join them up and you'll be up and laughing in no time. Same as usual guys, you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. You can even come say good day in the comments below if you want. Anyway, let's see what I'm on about today guys. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys are clumsy like me, but you know, I'm, I'm terrible at this sort of thing. Like I leave stuff on the ground, I run over it and I do all sorts of things. I'm uh, clumsy as they say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have even just done it like this guys just twisted it round like that, you know, and got a roll of black tape and just taped it up and using it for a ground clamp lead. And that was all very well until this started smoking and then almost set the garage on fire. And I thought, well, Pete, you better not do that again because you're going to end up with the fire brigade coming around. So what I ended up doing, guys, is just buying the little joiners and they're not that much dearer than three or four rolls of bloody tape, to tell you the truth. And you can use them for all sorts of stuff. They're really, really cool. You can interchange them to all different sorts of machines. And once you lock them together, they're not going to heat up and they're not going to cause the fire, which is probably a good thing, really. Anyway, I'll show you, guys. So instead of buying my tape, guys, all I ended up doing was buying these things. Like I say, they're as cheap as chips. 1025 one here. This is what they call a DINS plug. It's got a cam lock on it. And you know you know the ones I mean, eh? when you go into your machine and you lock your, your plug in. Well, these are just a lot of replacement ones, and they're really cheap. And you get a male and a female, and you can actually join the cable together with them. So this is up to about 100 amp here. It's a 1025 connector plug. And then you get like a 3551, which is a 200 amp, 250 amp. See, it's got a hell of a lot bigger end on it here. I'll pull them to bits in a minute and show you. And then we get the 5070, the big one here, which is like up to about 400 amp, 350, 400 amp. So I just join them together with this. So I'll show you how to do it. It's really, really simple and it's really, really cheap. And you know what Pete likes? Pete loves cheap. <laughs> so this is actually the other end of that plug, guys. If you have a look here, as you can see, I collect a few of these things. This is just a little 1025 one. You know, that's what you see in your plasma cutter machine. That, that bolts onto your machine like that, and then you plug the screws in. Here, let me grab a plug, guys, and I'll show you. Here's this little 1025 plug here, but it hasn't got the wire on it. And it's on a little cam lock, if you can see in there. I'll show you in a bigger one. You'll be able to see it easier. But you just put it in there, like so. Lock them in. Bob's your wombat. I just pulled the end of that plug off, of course, because it's got no wire on it. But you get the general gist of the idea. Lock. Lock it up again. Piece of peas. Unlock. Lock. Piece of weasels. And you can also buy the machine ends if you burn out in here. My welder at the moment doesn't earth properly because it's burnt out in here. So I'm going to have to replace the actual socket into the machine. I might actually do another video on that. But yeah, like I say piece of cake and the cheapest chips are not worth while pissing around with a lump of tape guys and then you go up to the next size here which is your 3550 plug which once again as you can see is, is bigger can you see the cam in here it's got a cam and it goes around in the inside there so if I grab the other end of it like so the other end of the plug so this is you know you can get up to about 250 amps with this put it in there lock it up Bob's your wombat and it's really 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 good so all you need to do, instead of having this end, you just need a female end that looks like this, which I'll show you in a minute. Put your wire in the other end, and then you can and you can make extension cords and all sorts of things. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, now I'll show you the really big ones, guys. The 5070s. You know, if you notice with these 5070s, guys, these are really, really big, these sockets. And this socket here is it's like about, I don't know, what would it be, 20% of the size smaller? But it actually fits the same plug. It actually fits the same 3550 socket. If you look at that, it goes in there. And if you look at this one, it goes in there. So I don't actually know what the reasoning is, apart from the fact that the physical size of this on the outside is a lot bigger. It may just be for the machine that you're, that you're using. Anyway, enough of that, and I'll show you how to join your wire together. <laughs> So as you can see guys, I buy a few of these bits and pieces, but I also never throw anything away. I don't throw away old plugs, I keep them, because you can just use them over and over again. 
And even when I go to the dump, if I find an old welding lead at the dump, I'll just take it, even if it's buggered, and I'll just cut the plugs off it because I'm like that, because I'm miserable and cheap. <laughs> But anyway, let's get into this, eh? So you don't want to be taping it with insulation tape, guys, because it just sets your garage on fire. All you need to do is buy a DINS plug, and you need to buy a, a, a male and a female plug. And when I've been buying them, they seem to come in sets for two males or two females. They don't actually have a male and a female, but it might just be the company that I'm ordering them from. So make sure you've got a male and a female. And the male one, it's got the protruding bit out like this, of course, with the cam on it like that. And the female one is just the opposite end. It's got the hole with the cam that goes in it, like so. And these are really good. They're, they're really well made and, and uh, they don't heat up, which is what I like. That's really what I like about the whole thing. They just don't heat up. And like I say, once you've got a set of these made up, you can interclip them to anything and you can make your leads longer or shorter or go from a bigger welder to a smaller welder. Here, yeah, look, if you even look here, I've made one up here. This is for my MIG, for my earth lead. But it hasn't got a lead coming out of it because what I've done is I've put a smaller plug on the back of it so I can interchange my earth leads, whatever machine I'm using, I can use the same earth lead, so it's a really good idea. I might do a video how to make one of these as well. So what you're going to do first guys is, and if you have a look here, see this one here, this is like the female rubber end because it goes in, it's sort of concave. And this is like the male rubber end because it sort of protrudes a bit if you understand what I'm saying. All of them have, if you look down here, they have two big hunks of rubber there which go into these two grooves here one groove there and one groove there so what you got to do is put your wire in and set it up right and then push it in because once they get it in there they're a bugger to get out I tell you <laughs> right anyway let's get into it eh? so first of all we shall do the female one so poke your wire up the back like that poke them all the way up you're gonna have to roughly measure it So that when you pull it back, you're all the way into here, if you know what I mean. And sometimes these things come with this little copper thing, which you're supposed to put over your wire and crush it in there so it doesn't come out. But I just tend to do it the other way around, I just tend to bend the wire around. So like I say guys, if you roughly measure from there to about there before it gets to the tit and just cut it off. So we're about that, Pete. Really technical here guys. Cut them off. And then what we want to do is put this, actually what we want to do first, Pete, is undo this properly. Now don't try putting that in the rubber boot when you've still got this up because it won't work. And now you see why they give you this copper sleeve, because you can put it in here and you can actually crush everything down with it. So we might actually use that, Pete. Some of them have it, some of them don't. So you put it in the copper sleeve like that, guys. And now if we just do them up. And you've got to give it the gum boot, guys. Give it a good swing on it. Because what you want to do is crush that copper sleeve. But if you haven't got the copper sleeve, I've used it without the copper sleeve before. It doesn't really do much. But anyway. So do it up tight, guys. Yeah, like so. And then look for those two grooves that I told you about. So turn this around. Push them back up, look for the two grooves. Where are the two grooves? Pull it down a little bit more so I can see. Got a groove there and a groove there. So you line the two grooves up, pull the wire through the bottom. Yeah, it's going. See it going, guys. Ooh. And then we'll just. We've got it in there like that, we'll just push it home with a pair of pliers. See how we're nice and snug in there? We're right on the bottom of the lip there. One more smack for good luck. Hee <laughs> hee, beautiful. Hey, looks like something, something was bought in the shop. <laughs> right, so this is our male end. Looking pretty, looking pretty snazzy, isn't it? Now we'll get the female end. Exactly the same thing, guys. This one here has already got the copper thing in it. So we'll measure them again. It's really technical again, guys. They save you a lot of money because you can use your welding leads over and over again. And like I say, you can join bits onto them and cut bits off to them and, and multi-use them for different machines. So it's um, they're really good fittings. So I like them anyway. 
and they're cheap, which I like as well. I'll put some links below if you want to buy some of these things. They're called a DINs fitting. Don't know what DINs stands for, but anyway. Give it the gun boot, Pete, do it up. You have to do it tight, guys, because when you're pulling on that wire, you don't want to be pulling it out. Here we go. And don't do what I just did. I didn't put the rubber boot on, and it's got a plug on the other end as well, so I can't get it off, so I'm going to have to take this off. Hmm. Don't you love it when you've got to do things twice? But at least if I take this off, I'll be able to show you how it's crushed that wire in there. See that? It's only half crushed there. I didn't really tighten it up enough. But I wonder if I can actually get a second use out of that. So I'll just try and open that up again to get that wire back in there. Anyway, we'll give it another crack, Nigel. So this time, guys, put your boot on. Make sure you've got the right end. Jeez, Louise, imagine doing that. <laughs> Pull them through a little bit, guys. Right, we'll give it another go, eh? Give it another crack, Nigel. See, now I'm having trouble because I've already squashed that thigger there. See how it's already squashed it? So what I'm going to do is not bother using that. We'll just go straight in with the wire, guys. That's what I should have done in the first place, really. So once again, give it the gumboot. Hear that? Ooh. Once again, guys, line it up with the two runners down the side. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you will never get it in. All right, we've got it lined up roughly. Pull the pull the wire from the bottom and just double check that it's lined up. Nope, wrong side, Pete. Now it's lined up. Did you actually hear it click in? Push it down as hard as you can. Tap it down with the pliers. Well, you might even have to push it down on the welding table or something. Because these are really hard to get on, some of them. Oh, shit. We're getting there, guys. You think they're hard to get on, you want to try and get them off. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Looks good on there. See, we're down onto the right runners there. We grab the other end, put them together. Click them together, do up the cam. Look at that, guys. Awesome. And it's not going to get hot. <laughs> and you can just undo it and go and plug it into something else if you want. Beautiful. So that's really, really easy to do, guys, eh? And it looks good, it does what it's supposed to, it doesn't heat up, and it won't set your workshop on fire, which has got to be a bonus, eh? Anyway, guys, same as usual, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and we'll see you next time, eh? Bye. Pete's